guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's episode, we are gonna finish up with the front fork rebuild. We're also gonna add a couple more things to the Honda CB650 Custom, uh, including rear shocks. We're gonna put the wheels back on. We're gonna finish up the frame hoop, the rear seat, add some turn signals, and do a couple more mods to the bike, uh, and basically get it ready to ride for the remainder of the season. And I also plan on taking you all out for a ride on the Honda, uh, just to kind of show you how it performs and uh, kind of talk about the upcoming mods for it. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you, Maddie. Good girl. All right, so really quick, I just wanted to go over the parts because I had to order a couple of parts from Revzilla and eBay. Uh, number one, I got these little copper bushings. There's the part number. I figured if I'm gonna go ahead and replace everything in the forks, might as well replace these. So I went ahead and ordered those. Uh, I messed up one of the washers when I was pulling out the fork, so here's a replacement. And there's the part number as well. And last but not least, the sir clip that I broke because it was super rusty. That is the part number. And I went ahead and bought two just in case I messed up the other fork, which I don't think I did. So I'll just have a spare in case I ever do this again. Got a bunch of PVC dust on me. You'll see why here a little bit later, uh, but let's go ahead and get those forks back together. Okay, so the first things first, I wanna go ahead and take care of a little bit of rust that's on the stainless steel part of the fork. Uh, I'm gonna use a stuff called Never Dull that should hopefully just peel this uh, rust off just a little bit. Now, this rust, isn't really gonna be a problem or anything like that. I just wanna clean it up a little bit. This is where it sat in the fork tubes, uh, or I guess the steering stem fork, triple tree, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> uh, this is where it sat in the triple tree and it got a little bit rusty. It's not gonna affect anything because this part doesn't actually reach down to the seal, but I wanna go ahead and clean it up anyway so it doesn't get any worse. All right, now I'm gonna put this little cap back on. I'm gonna use a little bit of grease to keep it nice and stuck to that. Okay. First things first, let's put in the copper uh, spacer, or copper bushing, I guess. We'll take the old one and drive it in. All right, next thing up is this washer with the little indention. And now the new seal. Put a little bit of fork oil on the fork tube itself and on the seal. And we wanna make sure the spring side is up. That's how it came out, spring side up. I'm gonna double check that real quick. Yes, I have more, my orientation right, so we wanna have the two lips on the inside down, uh, and then kind of the one lip on top up, spring side up. You can compare them with your other old seals, but they do look a little bit different, at least mine do. Uh, this part was actually up, uh, and that part was down. So we should be good to go. So now we're gonna use the old seal to hammer down the new one. Let me clean this off a little bit. And 
then you take your washer. This is a new one because the other one bent all up. Looks kind of weird. It goes in. And then the circlip. There we go, all done. Dust cap needs to go on, and then we can reinstall this. Uh, well, spring's gotta go in, dust cap, all that kind of good stuff, but this one's done. Let's move on to the next one. guys so before I put the springs back in I just want to show you all uh, where these bottom out so I've got these uh, lowered in the triple tree a little bit less than an inch uh, I think it's close to more uh, it's probably closer to like three-fourths of an inch I've got that much gap between the bottom of this brake piece and my uh, my front wheel fender if I bottom these out completely that's them bottomed out as far as they will go so I've got plenty of room I don't think I'm going to run into any contact issues or anything like that. Uh, really, the only thing that's in, well, not even in the way, but uh, maybe would be, oh man, fireworks. <laughs> maybe would be in the way would be the brake lines, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be getting some stainless steel lines as well. Uh, so those hopefully won't be as bulky as those and they'll get out of the way. But I think this is plenty good. This definitely gives me a little bit of wiggle, wiggle room to bottom out and uh, I get that lowered look like I was shooting for. So let's go ahead and put these springs back in these forks. Uh, I just wanna pressure test them to make sure it all holds air fine, and then uh, we can add the fluid and kind of do the finishing touches to get the wheel back on the front of this bike. Tightly coiled part up at the top. Alright guys, and here she is, my 1981 Honda CB650 Custom, and boy it looks custom with that ca cafe racer style seat. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about all the stuff we did on this bike, and as you're probably seeing here, there are a couple of things that I did off camera, which I want to go over, and how we got it to look the way that it looks right now. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is the Cafe Racer style seat and how it turned out. So for those who have not seen the previous video, we added this seat to the bike. It's a very low profile Cafe Racer style seat that required a little bit of modification for the frame. So we actually lopped off the frame right about here and added in this frame hoop so that it fits the contours of the seat. And I think it turned out absolutely perfect. Uh, it's very comfortable. It's an affordable price. And I think it really 
fits the look of this bike. Uh, and it gets rid of the whole big bulky rear fender, rear tail light, and the, just the big seat that was on here originally. I think it was an awesome modification. I'll put a link in the description as I did my previous video on that seat. And if you're curious about what I did to actually get that seat mounted, make sure you go ahead and check out that video. I will also link it here. Now, if you caught it in this video, I did also add these new rear shocks as well as these super teeny tiny uh, Kellerman Auto signal indicator lights and brake lights. They are super tiny, uh, but very bright. People have no trouble seeing me at nighttime. It's a super bright LED light. Um, and I had to weld in these little tabs or make these little tabs so that I could actually mount these lights. Um, and I think they look great because really from the back of the bike, you don't see any sort of LEDs or lights that draw your attention to it. They're just super tiny kind of hidden and uh, they really fit the look of the bike and they're safe too i mean they're super super bright and now as for the shocks these are just replacement shocks for the honda cb650 they are a little bit longer i'll put the length of them here uh, in the video in case anybody is interested in them they're also a lot stiffer and the reason that i did that is because now we have a frame hoop here and the rear wheel can actually come in contact or may be able to come in contact with the frame hoop now with the extension with lengthening these rear shocks and the spring rates that are on there, again, it's much stiffer than, than stock. Uh, there is no way that this rear tire is gonna come in contact with the frame hoop. I've had no issues with it riding it all season. Uh, so I, I think it was a good, uh, definitely a good modification to do, especially if you're adding a hoop to your rear seat. Next up are the front shocks. We did a full rebuild on these shocks. Just look at the previous video and today's video to kind of go over that process. And off camera, I went ahead and repainted the calipers and added these stainless steel brake lines uh, to the front disc brakes. This bike is from 1981 and these stock lines were pretty much just, uh, they were worn out and they didn't work very well. So after I installed those stainless steel lines, my braking on this bike is freaking awesome. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking to modify your braking system, definitely check out those stainless steel lines. Again, they'll be down in the description. So now up top, I did some modifications that I didn't actually record. Uh, it was just kind of some things that I did here and there as I was riding this bike uh, through the season, but I wanted to go over what I did. So one of the big modifications is I added these mini uh, Speedo and Tack to replace the OEM gauge cluster. I think it looks much better than the OEM one. The OEM one was just so big and bulky. It almost looked like Mickey Mouse ears on the front of the bike. So uh, adding these in there uh, makes the profile much more sleek and uh, I'm super happy with them. They're really cool, really minimal, um, and they, look, they just look good. I also added some new headlight brackets with some Kellerman Auto uh, front indicator lights. I think they look really good. They work really well. And I also added another handlebar instead of the stock one that I originally had on this bike. And of course, we added new tires front and rear. Both of these tires are from Shinko. They seem to be a pretty good overall uh, kind of street looking tire. I haven't had any issues with them. They seem to seem to run pretty well, got good grip. Uh, they've exceeded my expectations for uh, use with this bike. And uh, I suggested if you're looking for a not gonna say a cheap replacement, but uh, something that's not super, super high end. So last but certainly not least, I made a custom license plate mount for the rear of the bike. I did not wanna mount the license plate here because I didn't want it to get in contact with the rear wheel. So I just kind of set it off to the side uh, and it seems to be working pretty good. It took me probably 20 minutes to make, uh, cutting out some metal and welding it up. And uh, for the time that I put towards it, it does its job just fine. All right guys, so that pretty much wraps up all the modifications that we have done to this bike, and this is how it currently sits. Again, we're close to the end of the riding season, so uh, before it gets too cold, I wanna go ahead and take you all out for a ride on this thing, so you can listen and hear how it sounds, uh, see how it performs, and then we'll talk about some of the upcoming mods that I wanna do over winter and into next year. All right guys, let's hop on. Hey guys, so I figured in this video I'd take you all out for a ride on this thing, since I have actually been riding it for uh, quite some time, pretty much the whole summer. And uh, as you can tell by the trees and the leaves, the warm days are limited riding this bike. So anytime I have a chance to ride it, I try to get out on it. It's been a whole bunch of fun. So let's start this thing up and we'll go for a little ride.
a little bit rough on cold starts, but I mean, what do you expect for an 81 Honda? So can we take a second to appreciate the LEDs um, and how they turned out on the frame hoop, man. I'm super excited with how it turned out. I think it looks great. Uh, on video in the daylight, these look a little dim, but I promise you in person, they're much brighter. Um, I haven't had an issue with them yet. I've had friends ride with me. They say that they're super bright. Uh, of course, they get a lot brighter when you press the brake pedal, uh, but everything seems to be working pretty well with them. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with how small they are. I mean, you really get close to this. They are super, super tiny, but very bright. So awesome lights, highly suggest them. They look awesome on the bike as well. So one of my favorite things also about this bike is after I swapped these uh, slight raised handlebars, I've got a place for my cell phone, which is awesome. This clips in there and we're ready to go. sure if the microphone's going to pick up the noise of this thing, but man, it does sound really good. This drive isn't much of a scenic route. Uh, I'm actually on the way uh, back to work. I went home for lunch to grab my bike since it's a super nice day out. Figure my days are a little bit limited for the rest of the year on days that I can ride. So it's uh, I think November 8th or something like that. And it's uh, high 60s. So pretty good day to ride so hopefully the wind noise isn't super unbearable but I did want to talk a little bit about kind of plans for this bike moving moving forward um, so there's a couple of things left I want to do to it I do want to put progressive springs in the front shocks uh, to kind of stiffen the shocks up a little bit more and I do want to lower it a little bit more in the front I think the uh, I think the look of it being a little bit lower would be nice. Um, the front, in my opinion, sticks up a little high. Uh, but again, I, I'm playing it safe. You know, I don't want to adjust suspension too much and cause issues with the bike. Um, also, I want to make sure that if I do lower this, the shocks don't bottom out. The front shocks don't bottom out. I never want that to be an issue because if your front shocks bottom out, you're in for a bad time for sure. I don't know if you can tell from this video, but the suspension on this thing is a little harsh. Uh, I attribute that to the rear wheels. Uh, they are on the stiffest setting because I was worried about the rear uh, hoop coming into contact with the wheel. Um, but I think I have plenty of room for some more suspension travel in the rear. So I'm probably gonna, uh, you know, make those a little bit softer, uh, set them down a little softer so I'm not jumping all over the road when I hit bumps like that. Um, but other than that, they've been holding up pretty well and doing a good job. So another thing I want to work on is the gas tank. That's probably going to be for sometime this winter, maybe next year. Uh, the gas tank's cool. I actually like the way that it looks. It's been growing on me. Um, but the purposely rusted look of it uh, and the crappy clear coat and paint that they used on this, at least the previous owner did, I'm not a huge fan of. So I'm either going to be redoing this tank and painting it uh, a color to match the bike, or I'm going to be swapping to a CB750 tank, which is a little bit more square, a little bit bigger, uh, but they tend to match kind of Cafe Racer, the look of a Cafe Racer a little better, I feel like. So with the tank, uh, Another big mod that I still want to do to this bike is an exhaust. Now, um, I originally got a Mac 4 into one exhaust. I think it looks cool. Uh, they sound awesome, but I gotta be honest, riding this bike more often, uh, the, the quad exhaust tips 
I'm actually uh, a big fan of. I think they really make the look of the bike. So I may reconsider that exhaust option and maybe kind of custom make my own where I cut off the mufflers on the stock um, on the stock exhaust and then weld in some cone tips at the end. Uh, I think it'll look cool, it'll sound better, and it will keep kind of that factory look uh, that I've kind of fallen in love with with this bike. Other than those mods, there are a couple of maintenance items that I need to still do to this bike. Uh, that's cool. Um, so in the high RPMs with this bike, I have a pretty intense vibration in the handlebars. Uh, I know this is an old bike and some of the, uh, you know, some of the bushings for the motor and all that kind of stuff, maybe suspension bushings might be a little bit worn out. Um, but. I think it has more to do with the boots that connect to the carburetor. So I did notice that the boots, the intake boots, are cracked a little bit. Um, I don't know if I showed it on this video, but I can definitely see some little hairline cracks in there. And I'm thinking that some air is getting in through those boots and just causing kind of a, I don't know, weird, weird detonation. Maybe some extra air is getting in there, maybe a lean event or something like that. I don't think it's anything crazy because the bike still idles fine and it runs fine, but there's definitely something that I'm going to want to do over the winter is uh, definitely swap out all of the intake tubes uh, and then just uh, some regular maintenance, do an oil change on it, uh, definitely check my motor mounts, bushings, replace all those that I need to, um, and then really just enjoy this thing, man. It's been a blast so far. It's been a great bike to actually learn on. This is my first actual motorcycle. Uh, and I couldn't be happier, man, with how it turned out and how it rides. Uh, it's, a, it's a super awesome bike. Also, man, this thing opens up at 5,000 RPMs, dude. I don't know if the camera's picking it up or the microphone's picking it up, but if I really get on it, which I'll, I'll try to get on it a little bit up here, um, it really opens up at like 5,000 RPM. I don't know what kicks in or, or what's going on, but uh, it sounds freaking amazing up in that RPM range. Oh, this looks great. Not sure how we're gonna get around this. I guess that works. All right, I'll try to open up a little bit here. Hopefully the microphone picks that up a little bit, but it does actually sound really good with the stock exhaust at about 5,000 RPM. I don't know, I'm happy with it. I think a modified exhaust is gonna sound even better. This is with the visor open, maybe you can hear it a little better. just way too much wind noise one of the two <laughs> all right guys well i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you enjoyed this little ride i do plan to do some more moto vlogs as long as i can sort out this moto vlog setup i'm having an issue with audio being captured so 
hopefully this video had audio if not i guess we have to overlay some but um if you all enjoyed this video please smash that thumbs up button if you want to be notified when i post more content to the channel please consider pressing that subscribe button but yeah guys stay tuned for more content and until next time i'll see you later Thank you.